The Department of Homeland Security and FBI have issued a warning to U.S. energy companies about hackers finding vulnerabilities in their computer systems. Those hackers are believed to be Russian. Jim Lewis has worked at the Departments of State and Commerce as a Foreign Service Officer and as a member of the Senior Executive St Service. He's currently the Senior Vice President of the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Jim, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. I do want to ask you, first of all, what's the impact of these potential cyber attacks? In the actual impact of the attack is very small. It's reconnaissance. The Russians are looking to see if they could get in when they need to. What the real danger is, is that they feel free to do this kind of thing, and they're not worried about getting caught. So actual risk to American citizens, pretty low, uh, but the Russians are certainly off the leash and feeling like they can do what they want. When the public hears about this, though, I, I mean, it does make you somewhat nervous, I have to be honest with you. Are there any threats to the public as of right now, or can you kind of squash that? It, there's no threat to the public. The nuclear industry has done a good job over the last few years of separating the kind of networks that the hackers get into, you know, business networks, email, uh, personal information about employees, PR stuff, HR stuff and separating that from the control systems that actually run the plants. So they weren't able to get into the control systems. That's the good news. But the fact that they're trying is the bad news. Yeah, we don't like to hear that. It's being reported, too, that a group that's somewhat known to us, Energetic Bear, a Russian hacking group, is behind the attacks. <laughs> we know that President Trump and Putin discussed cybersecurity today at the G20 summit. Is this a good launching point to maybe further discussion? Or you kind of laughed about the group there. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure, because uh, it's it's the uh, Russian intelligence services, and these are big, burly guys. They're thugs, and they don't call themselves Fuzzy Bear or Smarmy Bear or whatever. Um, Energetic so Bear. <laughs> whatever. You know, it's just not. It's think of think of big guys named Igor and Ivan. They're not calling themselves Fuzzy Bear or Energetic Bear. But the Russians, for some reason, seem to want to talk to us about it, and it's not clear to me exactly why. Uh, they announced today that we were going to restart a cybersecurity working group. Um, it'll be good to see what happens. I mean, the Russians, of course, deny everything, but right. talking is better than not talking. How do you feel about them denying everything when we have all this evidence? Um, what else can they do? They're not going to burst into tears and confess. Uh, that's just a particularly big, early guy's named Ivan. So it's sort of par for the course. Everybody always denies everything. But at some point, they have to admit, um, maybe we've gone a little too far by poking around in the nuclear power facilities. Um, last month, Homeland Security and the FBI issued a general warning to the energy sector about these types mm -hmm. of cyber attacks. What does that signal to you? And I, I, all I can think of is if the electricity went down in this country, just what a problem that would be. Yeah, the, the problem is the, the Russians, the Chinese, even the Iranians have been probing critical infrastructure for years, looking for vulnerabilities, looking for things they could exploit. So it's not really that new. What's different is that we've seen in the last few months the Russians um, degrade, attack the Ukrainian electrical system, turn off the power, do exactly what you're talking about. So it's, it's not that they're probing critical infrastructure, it's that it's a much more aggressive Russia. And um, we need to figure a way to tell them, you know, maybe back off. That's what's worrying people. That's why they issued the warnings. We've seen the Russians turn off the power in Ukraine, and that means they could probably do it anywhere in the world. That's a scary thought uh, to many yep. people. What can companies, especially those controlling that critical infrastructure, do to guard themselves really against these kind of threats in your mind? Well, I think they've taken a lot of steps, and the most important is to separate the control systems from the public-facing Internet. So when you go online and you, you do a search engine or you see your email, that's the public Internet. If that was connected to a control system, that would be really bad. So there's been a huge effort over the last few years to separate the two, make it difficult to jump from one to the other. That doesn't mean it's impossible. And so what I would say is double-check. In the past, we've done tests with companies and said, you know, do you have anything connected to the Internet on your control networks? The answer is always no, but sometimes it turns out they do have stuff. So check, make sure you're separate, put those safeguards in place for industrial control. Good points. Jim Lewis, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you.